What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin, and just a heads up, this weekend, I will be going to Winter Weekend, the Red Sox thing going on this weekend. So if something does happen or breaks this weekend, I may have to wait until Monday to make a video about it. So just a heads up on that. And if you are going to Winter Weekend and want to meet up, want to say hi, and you see me there, just let me know. I'd love to meet some of you guys in person. I think it'd be a fantastic time. But either way, again, there may not be a video this weekend, depending on how things go. Either way, though, the Red Sox are still keeping busy because yesterday we made a video about the Red Sox signing outfielder Adam Duvall and they didn't stop there with their outfield depth because this morning it was announced that the Red Sox signed outfielder Rymel Tapia which may seem insignificant right now but maybe it's not so what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to talk about Rymel Tapia we're going to talk about his contract we're going to talk about his statistics everything about him personally and we're going to talk about why the Red Sox may have signed Rymel Tapia then finally we're going to put on on our tinfoil hat and go into some conspiracy theories as to why Brian Tapia may have been signed. Before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Before we get into the details about everything surrounding Tapia statistics, contract stuff like that, you may be sitting there wondering to yourself, how do I know this name? How do I know Rymel Tapia? Well, it's mostly because he was a part of what may be the most infamous incident of the 2022 Red Sox season. He was the guy who hit the inside the park grand slam against the Red Sox when they were in the midst of one of the games where they got historically cooked in, right? It was that Blue Jays game where it was like 28 to three or something insane like that. Sorry, Jaron, you're going to catch some strays in this video, but that's probably how you know who Rymel Tapia is. But anyways, last night, right around 2 a.m., Rymel Tapia himself broke the news that he will be joining this Red Sox team. He posted on his Instagram story that he will be signing with the Red Sox. Now, there wasn't really much information on that Instagram story as the actual contract itself. It was just simply a picture of the Red Sox logo. He also reposted a couple of like congratulations for signing stuff on his Instagram story. So there wasn't a ton to go off of there but i do find it kind of hilarious that the player himself broke the news i think it was mostly because it was at 2 a.m and it's a minor league contract which we found out later from john Heyman, who tweeted out that the red sox and rymel tapia are in agreement for a minor league deal now we don't have any real information on what the years and the money looks like for rymel tapia but it's pretty safe to assume that this is a one-year deal somewhere in the middle of one to two million dollars if he makes the major league roster so nothing crazy not a a big deal it's a minor league contract with maybe an invitation to spring training and a chance to make the major league roster again nothing crazy in that deal at all and for Rymel Tapia that deal kind of makes sense he's a very average player in 2022 he spent the year with the Toronto Blue Jays where he played in 128 games in those 128 games Rymel Tapia had an average of 265 with a 292 on base percentage and a 380 slug with a 91 OPS plus which is just under league average by about 9%. Honestly, all those statistics are just slightly below league average, except for the actual average itself, where it's sitting right at 265. It's right above league average. So pretty much league average to below league average statistics from Rymel Tapia. Now, taking a look at his baseball savant page here, there is a lot of blue, especially in the defense category, as well as the power category. But there is some stuff that may be a little bit interesting in Rymel Tapia's statistics last year. He was 65th percentile in K percentage, so, so fairly difficult to strike Rymel Tapia out. He's in the 67th percentile in whiff percentage and the 79th percentile in max exit velo, which to me is really interesting because the rest of his power statistics are really not good. There is a lot of blue in his power statistics, except for his max exit velo, who he must have gotten a hold of a couple of baseballs last season that really went a long way. So again, with the baseball reference stuff, with all his actual statistics, combined with his baseball savant page where you take a look at how he ranks compared to the rest of the league it's pretty obvious that Rymel Tapia is again average to right below average when it comes to production at the plate and really below average when it comes to production on the field stats that really aren't going to jump out at you now realistically Rymel Tapia was signed to be simply a depth piece for this Red Sox team in a position where there isn't a ton of depth already if you think about it right the Red Sox have their three starting outfielders they have reduced 
Gugo. Now they have Adam Duvall. They also have Masataka Yoshida. Kike can play a little bit of outfield shore. On the bench, you've got Ref Snyder and Duran right now. Outside of that though, there isn't a ton of other options for the Red Sox when it comes to major league ready outfield talent. You have Rafaela who's getting close to major league ready, but he's not quite there yet. My guess is he will start the year in triple A and really try to tweak and hone in on his plate approach, which a lot of people are concerned with. So we'll probably see Rafaela start the year in the minor leagues and maybe at some point be ready for major league baseball, but he is simply not MLB ready at this moment. So adding Tapia to this team gives you flexibility with the bench. You can either decide to have Tapia on the bench and have Duran in AAA. You could flip flop those guys maybe a couple of times, right? It gives you options on the bench, which you did not have before signing Rymel Tapia. And that's realistically the reason the Red Sox signed Rymel Tapia to a minor league contract. But you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, hey, Corbin, why are we doing a whole video on a minor league deal for a guy who's probably going to be nothing more than depth? Well, the first reason is because I like giving you guys all the information on everything that's going on in Red Sox Nation. If this is a guy who's going to affect the 2023 roster in any way, I want you guys to know who he is, what the contract looks like, and what that effect on the 2023 roster could be. But the other reason is because we're going to put on our tinfoil hat here, have a little fun, and dive into some conspiracy theories as to what this signing may mean. Now, again, this is just absurd speculation. This is not me confirming any rumors. This is not me getting any sources. This is just simply pure speculation. But what if the Red Sox signed Rymel Tapia in anticipation for a bigger move, possibly via trade? We know that there are teams out there right now who the Red Sox could trade with looking for MLB ready outfield talent. Specifically, the Miami Marlins have been public about wanting outfield MLB ready talent, and the Red Sox have been public publicly linked to some of their young starting pitching. What if signing Rymel Tapia was the start of possibly trading away one of our MLB ready outfielders for a starting pitcher from the Miami Marlins? My guess is the first guy on the trading block would be Jaron Duran. I think that he makes the most sense to be traded looking at this roster right now, but heaven forbid, I really don't want this to happen. I really don't think this is going to happen, but this does also may open the doorway to trading Alex Verdugo for one of these these guys. Again, I don't think this is going to happen. I don't want this to happen. I really want Doogie on this 2023 team. I really think he's going to take his game up a level in 2023. But at the end of the day, maybe this is a pathway for trading him to the Miami Marlins for some young starting pitching. Again, this is complete speculation. This is absolutely just simply tinfoil hat conspiracy stuff right here. At the end of the day, I truly think that Rymel Tapia was brought in as strictly depth piece for for this Red Sox team. I really don't think it's anything more than that, but it's just fun to talk about. And I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of Rymel Tapia signing? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And do you think there may be more to this signing than just simply depth? Let me know all your thoughts on this topic in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like I said in the intro, if you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Plus, you made it to the end here, you might as well hit that sub button. You also might as well hit that like button as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seat.